Moving to Florida will change your life and your lifestyle. There are pros and cons, and the price of homes is pretty high. Maybe we can help you with that. Stay tuned. More people are moving to Florida than almost any state in the country. Manufactured housing in mobile home parks, resident-owned communities, and on your own land can save you a bundle and make Florida living possible with a lot less cash. First, we'll cover some of the basics on choosing an area of Florida that might interest you. Then we'll talk about the types of communities and the financial advantages of each. Stick around to the end where I'll reveal to you the thing I most fear in Florida. Hello, I'm Russ Watson, and I help folks choose a Florida manufactured housing solution that fulfills their dreams and meets their needs. Let's dig in. In 2022, Florida's population increased by 1.9% to a little over 22 million residents. This made Florida the fastest growing state in the nation. Most of the population is along the central coasts, the southeast coast, around Orlando, and around Jacksonville, while much of the rest of the state is really rather rural. Where you want to live in Florida is often chosen based on how cold you like it in the winter. If you like it a little cooler, then the northern parts of Florida are for you. But if being in the pool or on the beach is one of your favorite pastimes, then the further south you go, the warmer it will be in the winter. In the summer, as these average high and low temperatures in July of 2022 show, it's about the same north to south, with inland areas hotter than the shores. 58% of those surveyed in our YouTube community indicated it was important to them to live within 20 miles of a beach. Florida beaches are located in three distinct areas. The Panhandle beaches feature pure white sand and have long been a vacation spot for many. On the West Coast, sand-covered beaches exist from Clearwater south to Naples. On the East Coast, there are beaches all the way from Jacksonville south to Miami. The beach at Panama City is popular with tourists, but the cooler winter temperatures make it less than ideal for those who like to go year-round. Bradenton on the west coast has one of the larger public beaches on the Gulf. Gulf Coast beaches are world-renowned but most areas lack public access and free parking. Beaches in the southern quarter of the East Coast, such as this one in Hollywood, tend to be very crowded and also lack public access. Daytona Beach is famous for allowing you to drive right out on the beach. You can always find a party here, or a quieter spot as well. This is typical of many public beaches on the East Coast. It's located in Vero Beach, but there is just so much public beach available on the central and northeast coast of Florida that it's easy to find a quiet stretch. There are major attractions which might cause you to pick a specific area. Orlando has its theme parks. The spring training facility for your favorite team might influence your decision. Others have simpler needs such as nearby shopping, entertainment, or an abundant choice of restaurants. There are many fine local and regional hospitals around Florida, but specialized care is primarily found in the largest cities. When looking at an area, be sure the care you need is available nearby. Cost of living ranked number one in our viewer concerns. Florida ranked 31st out of 50 in the U.S. News Affordability Ranking. If you are coming from these 15 most affordable states, Florida may seem expensive. 
If you are coming from these 15 most expensive states, Florida probably seems cheap. At the upper end of the spectrum is this lovely mansion in Jupiter. It may be a bit large for most of you. This home, located in a typical Florida development, is nice, but most folks would need a mortgage and a significant down payment. Manufactured homes can be every bit as fancy as their site build equivalents, but at much lower prices. You can find some real bargains in manufactured housing, like this home in a community with two pools and every amenity you can imagine. Some folks just don't want to tie up a lot of cash. This fully remodeled home would be perfect. Here's another one in a community with its own golf course, ideal for a snowbird looking to play in the winter months. So where do you find these homes and what's the catch? Homes on private land are found in several settings. Many rural areas allow manufactured homes on acreage, such as this home outside of Lakeland. Small manufactured housing subdivisions exist even in urban areas, and some are quite nice. Vacant lots are also often available on which you can have a new home installed. The cost of manufactured housing is considerably less than site-built homes. This also results in lower property taxes. If you find HOAs and rules intrusive, this is your solution. Financing is pretty much the same as in conventional homes. In these communities, there are certain restrictions placed upon the use of the land and the home. It may be as simple as one resident of the home must be 55 or older, or more complex with common property and an HOA. A recreation district such as Barefoot Bay is another type of deed-restricted community. Financing in these communities is the same as any conventional home. You need to read the deed restrictions carefully to understand your obligations and the limitations being placed on the deed. Where there is common property, assessments are possible for the maintenance, upgrade, and administration of the community. Some communities may have a manager and staff, while others may be governed by a resident volunteer HOA. These communities are very similar to deed-restricted subdivisions, but are covered under a different statute. They may range in size from quite elaborate to common property that just includes a couple roads and a clubhouse. Instead of owning the actual lot your home is on, in a co-op you own a share of the community, and the community owns the land. There are large and elaborate co-ops with substantial HOA fees and a percentage of homes owned by folks who rent their lots. Some co-ops have a manager, while smaller ones are managed by their HOA. The shareholders own the community, but you do not own your own individual lot. Because of this, conventional mortgages are harder to find. There are monthly HOA fees and usually rules imposed by the HOA. Shareholders can decide to sell the community to investors. Land lease communities are the most common in Florida. There are very large elaborate resorts with dozens of activities every week. Mid-sized communities provide many of the same amenities and activities typically at a lower price point. There are communities with waterfront access located within a few miles to beautiful public beaches. Smaller communities provide a more intimate setting and are often more affordable. What most think of when they hear the term mobile home park is also available, offering even lower lot rents to those seeking an economical Florida retreat. So, how does this let me come to Florida for less? Let's look at each of the opportunities. Manufactured homes cost less than site-built homes, even though they are built 
as well or better. This results in a much lower purchase price per square foot. That translates directly into lower monthly payments. You will realize the same reduction in purchase price in these types of parks. There will be HOA fees if there is common property, but these will be much lower than the lot rent in equivalent land lease communities. Cooperative communities, or co-ops, require about the same initial capital as subdivisions or condominiums if you are buying a share. Conventional mortgages are often not available, making monthly loan payments higher. Co-op HOA fees are usually much, much less than lot rent, and you get a vote on how the community spends that money. In land lease parks, since you are not buying the land, the initial investment is much lower. Quality homes can be found for under 50K. Even the high-end resort parks often have beautiful homes under 100,000, as you have seen in some of our videos. The large number of land lease parks in Florida make it likely there will be several choices in any given area. This also assures a greater choice in homes and the amenities offered. So what are some of the downsides to moving to Florida? The number one concern I hear is hurricanes. These can be fearsome storms. As you can see, Florida is in the middle of a large coastal area of the United States affected by hurricanes. There are some areas of the state more likely to be hit hard by hurricanes than others. If these really concern you, then the center and northern part of the state are where you want to locate. According to the Florida Fish and Wildlife Service, serious injuries caused by alligators are rare. I've lived in Florida over 10 years, and other than from a tour boat, I've never seen one, although friends tell me they see them on golf courses. Does that make golf dangerous? I like growing pineapples, and it is here in the garden I face my biggest fear in Florida. Fire ants are very common, and often the first thing a tourist discovers when they walk around in bare feet. Their technique is pretty sneaky. A whole bunch of them will climb all over you and you won't really notice until one sounds the attack bugle. Then they all bite at once. They are my biggest fear in Florida. I hope you enjoyed our video on moving to Florida and how manufactured homes might make this possible. If you'd like to see more videos on this topic, just click on the link. Please give us a thumbs up if you found this video helpful. That really helps the channel. Thanks for watching and see you next time.